Whew. So what's up, Pest Geeks? Well, finally made it to the beach today. I'm smoking a Casa Garcia Maduro. It doesn't taste like a Maduro. It tastes a little lighter than a Maduro, which is nice. So, got, just got back from PMU yesterday. At I left there around 12.30 and drove for about halfway, about 100 and something miles. Um, and, then I, and then I had lunch. And I got home around 5, picked up the kids. Got home around 6. By 7 o'clock, dude, I'm passing out on the couch. So I finally went to bed at 8 o'clock, which is hideous for me to go to sleep at 8 o'clock. And I wake up this morning at 4 a.m. And I looked at my clock and I go, uh-uh, I ain't getting up. I'm beat. I'm exhausted. So clock rings at 6.30 because I've got my clock to ring at 6.30 every day. I wake up every day at that time or earlier. And then I said, uh-uh, I ain't getting up. So I went back to sleep. I didn't get up till 9.30. Um, was in bed for over over 13 hours. I was beat. That drive over there, four-hour drive, five-hour drive, and then being at PMU all day on Thursday, eight hours at the um, – I took my WDO, WDI course, and it was all day Thursday, and then – half day on Friday. Uh, a lot of the practical stuff where you fill out the forms, you learn to actually produce a report, it gets done on, on Friday, but it's lecturing all day uh, for WDO. So what did I learn? Well, I learned that I don't know anything about WDO, which is great. One of the greatest things that I like about learning is to know what I don't know. I want to know what I don't know to figure out what I need to know so then that I can do a great job. It's burning kind of quick. This thing burns quick. So, so the whole deal is that it, this is all new for me. Termite's all new for me. But WO is a step above termite. Um, I can identify termites in the field, you know, pretty easily by if I collect enough samples and I get enough wings and, and all that. And I can find out if I got termite damage and, you know, see if the gallery's alive and a lot of things that I know how to do. Um, but I really don't know anything about termites as I should know. Second thing is, with WDO, you have to deal with funguses in Florida. Um, so you've got, you know, wood decay, wood fungus. And then you're dealing with beetles, uh, where you've got powder post beetle. And you got different beetles. You can get them confused. It's a real challenge uh, for you guys doing WDO in Florida. Mm. And then you're, I, I've got to learn how to identify them in the home and then reporting it. That's the key. Because this isn't about termite inspection. Uh, for those of you guys that are looking at upping your career, maybe you're tired of doing roaches, you're tired of doing ant jobs, you're tired of checking rodent base stations all day. This truly is for probably the top 1% of the industry to do WDO inspections. You have to pay an enormous amount to detail. If you're at that super anal retentive OCD guy that, is, has an attention to detail that he notices every imperfection and everything, this is the job for you. This is what you probably want to be doing is doing these inspections, especially because they're for real estate. So the whole idea, uh, WDO, it is when it's required by the bank uh, or another agency or whatever the customer requires it before they want to buy the home. The challenge is that most of the people referring you the work are the real estate people and the real estate people really don't want you to report anything. Now, real estate people are saying, I'll give you 35 jobs here in Miami, $35 for a WDI that takes you an hour and a half. The hope is 
you keep getting this work because you're hoping you're going to land a client that has a real problem and you're going to fix it. The problem is if you report it, you're not going to get the client because they're not going to buy the home um, because the bank is not going to want a loan on it if there's a severe problem. Then it gets holds the deal up. Then they want structural inspectors involved. The bank says, no, nope, I want a structural inspector involved before we, we close on this loan. So the whole idea is that if you're doing WDO and WDI in other, in other states, you're not working in the best interest of the customer if you are working for a real estate company. Whether you work for the buyer's real estate or the seller's, because the buyer doesn't want the deal held up either. He's getting his house held up from being bought and being sold for his client. So you want to work independently. You want to be, ideally, you want to go after the end client that you are protecting their investment, their purchasing decision. You don't want them to buy a house and be um, buying a house that has a huge problem that nobody wanted to disclose. Because at the end of the day, you're the one that's going to get thrown under the bus. They're going to take that bus, they're going to back it up, and they're going to run over you again. Because the real estate uh, agent is going to say, well, you know, we hired them to do the inspection. It was on them to report it. We had no clue this was going on. The seller wasn't disclosing it. The seller knew about it, but he isn't disclosing it. It is your job to find it and disclose it. So if, the, if the, 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 you're going there and the seller of the home says, nope, I don't want you to allow you. You're only allowed to peek into the attic because he knows there's damage up there. He doesn't want you looking for it. And he says, no, you're not allowed to go up there. Or he puts stuff in the way so you can't see it. Well, you report you couldn't see it. And the bank says, nope, that's not good enough. I want you to climb up there again. These are where the problems start, where you got to go back now and say, well, I got to charge you to go back and do another inspection because you hindered me from doing my inspection. So WDI and WDO inspections are really a nightmare. I mean, then you've got the possibility of getting sued. Think, think about this. You're, you're doing a transaction on a $1 million house, a $2 million house, $5 million estate, and you've got to disclose all of this, and you're holding up everybody's transaction. You're the guy that's going to be hated. That's really what it comes down to. You're the guy that's hated because you're screwing it up for everybody versus you're the guy that's saying, no, I want to make sure I do a thorough job for my client, and I want to find everything that's wrong, and I want to disclose it, and if you disclose it, you ruin everybody's deal. If you don't disclose it, you get taken into court and you get sued. That's the real challenge of doing it. So I'm doing, do I want to do this? If I do it, I'm doing it my way. I'm doing it where I'm going to go after the end user. I'm going to use my, my channel, my advertising, my marketing to go after the homeowner and say, before you buy a house, understand these are the facts. And this is what you're up against. And, and the only one that has you really your best interest at heart is really the inspector that's doing the work if you're a competent inspector. Then I'm looking at doing, do I want to get into home inspections and, and get my own client and get the home inspection, get the termite inspection, and be totally um, independent where I'm not subservient to a real estate agent, where I'm not subservient to somebody else's interest other than what is in the best interest of the client, my agency, my business lives to serve the client, the end user of my product, not the interest of anybody else. And that is the decisions that I'm making now as I'm getting into this, where I'm going to be probably at the end of the year to become a licensed home inspector. And then basically use my YouTube channel, use my social media, use everything to market ourselves as truly independent and that it, why you want to hire us over hiring any or taking a list of recommended because the real estate people will give you a list. They'll say, well, here's a list. We don't recommend anybody, but here's a list of people we've worked in the past. I mean, I did this when I bought my home and that guy was totally useless. The guy who inspected my home, um, didn't even notice we had termite damage and didn't even report it, announced it, told me anything about it. Everything was fine in that home, except I got to change the electrical panel because it's old. Well, no kidding. It's a 50-year-old home. So these are the things that we were going to make people aware of. So we're going to be hated. We're not going to be liked, but we serve the customer. We don't serve the industry. And, and this, we serve our customer. 
our, our, we do what is in the best interest of our customer because the customer is hiring us for something specific. And this is what we're looking at, guys. So I learned a lot that I don't know. I know what I don't know now. Now I pull life sheets. Now I go and do free inspections for people. Not reportable. I just say, hey, I want to do an inspection. I want to learn. I want to find out if I, and if I suspect there's anything wrong, I'm going to recommend you hire an inspector uh, because I want to get the experience. We have to go out in the field to get the experience. We have to do it right. And now I know. So now I'll be pulling IFA sheet on all these insects, memorizing all this data, creating for myself, um, you know, flashcards for testing myself and knowing if I know it. Because I tell you right now, guys, that course, your retention rate is going to be about, if you're, if you're really smart at retaining information, you're going to retain maybe 50% right there for the exam the next day. If you are a average guy if you're like me you're getting older and you're you know you're not a, a student that likes to cram in for that's why i never got into academics academics wasn't for me i like learning in the field i like learning the hard things i can't cram information to then just memorize it to pass an exam on something that i'm never going to practice again and that's one of the challenges i have with academia why i'm not good at it some people are good at it Kudos to you if you can memorize information just like that and the next day take an exam and pass it. For me, I know that I missed 50% on this exam. But I took the course. I know what I don't know. Now I can know what I need to learn and move forward. And this is what you have to look forward to at PMU. Um, it's hard. It's very difficult. I wouldn't recommend you send your average guy there. I recommend you send your top people there. And you keep your average people. If you're happy with your average people producing average results, that's up to you. Uh, for me, no, I don't like doing that. I'm going to hire the best people, send the best people, retain the best people. And then I basically start replacing the C players uh, in my organization as they start happening. That's the reality. Um, if you want to build the best organization, only the best people are going to help you build that the weakest links will bring your organization down because those are the guys that make everybody else look bad. And we need to hire people now. Are all my guys bad because they're not able to do WDO inspection? No, they just don't have the detail attention that I need for them to be able to do it. And right now I don't have two, the two guys that do LNO and GHP will not be able to do WDI inspections. I have to do these myself or hire a seasoned veteran that has the experience that I doesn't have uh, has a, a proven track record in this, and then go out and market it. Those are those are my options right now. So, hope this helps you guys in your career. Hope it helps you in moving along, doing new things, doing getting into different markets. Um, you know the real facts. I don't blow sunshine up your tailpipe. You know I never have. I don't make it sound impossible, but I give you the reality check. Um, you need a reality check to be able to do this. So. I'm ex I, I, I mean, I went back to bed. I had breakfast, brunch uh, at like at 12 o'clock, 1130. I went back to bed and took another nap for almost an hour. My son passed out on the couch. And then I decided to bring everybody here to the beach to let them play because they get restless being indoors. So here they come. Just like clockwork. Doesn't fail. Yes? Well, he was, while we were playing uh, tag, he fell and scraped his knee. Yikes. Well, that's not that bad. It's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll just get a wipey. Just play. Just watch where you're going. Okay? It's okay. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. It has blood on it. It's okay. It's okay. Nothing's it's not it's not gonna bleed to death. Alright, don't worry about it. We're gonna we're gonna get a wipey when we get there. Alright. <laughs> hey these two, bro. There's never a dull moment with these two. Um it's amazing that um I haven't bought a cast yet. Um so I did buy some stitches already for him when he was two years old. She grabbed him. He let, she let go and let him go. And he cut himself right here in the middle of the forehead. Blood was gushing out. We thought he busted his mouth or busted his nose. Turns out he just needed three stitches. So I had to hold him down while they stitched him. Anyway, guys, this is Frank the Pesky wishing you guys a spectacular day.